A trusted martial arts instructor is accused of kidnapping and abusing one of his young students. The victim's father uses a gun to take matters into his own hands. And the horrifying scene is all caught on camera. 1983, Jeff Doucette teaches martial arts to children in Louisiana. There's a lot of throws, takedowns, arm bars, wrist locks, and choke holds. Doucette appears to take a special interest in one of his students, 11-year-old Jody Plowshey. February 19, 1984. Jody Plowshey suddenly disappears, and his instructor is also gone. We went to Anaheim, California, and, and I went to Disneyland for the day. Decades later, as an adult, Jody Plowshey vividly remembers being taken across the country by Doucette. This was kidnapping. He had no right to take me, but I went willingly, and people can't comprehend. Why would you go with him to, to California? But I will say this. That was the closest I ever came to telling what was going on, because I didn't want to go to California. Afraid of upsetting his family, Jody Plowshey carries to California a dark secret about Jeff Doucette. Jeff had been sexually abusing me the, the year leading up to going to California. I mean, there's all kind of molesters out there, and most of them are someone that the kid knows and trusts. Back home in Louisiana, his parents, unaware of the alleged abuse, hope for any sign of their son. Finally, their phone rings. He allowed me to call my mom, say that I was okay. We were running out of money, and so, you know, when you're kidnapping and you call collect, you're asking to be caught. The police, monitoring the family's phone line, traced the call. Minutes later, officers in California stormed the motel room. That door came busting open, and, you know, they're covering. They got guns on him, guns on me, guns in my face. And, I mean, I immediately was, like, panicking. They grabbed me, and they pulled me out. A cop walked over to Jeff, and I heard him say, I'll punch you in the effing face. And, you know, they, they drug me out by the swimming pool and they sat me down while I was out there shaking. And, I was, and they're like, are, are you cold? I'm like, no, I'm not cold. And they're like, well, why are you shaking? I'm like, because y'all just had 100 guns in my face. John Pasterick, a local reporter, interviews Jody's father, Gary Plouche, as he waits for his son to be returned safely the next day by authorities. We did a long interview with him about what the family was going through. We were scared and our reaction was just erratic at times. We just, you know, didn't know what to think. It's just a waiting that, I don't know, it's a lot of waiting. We didn't know what to do. You just feel helpless. He was definitely uh, a worried father. He wanted to celebrate because his son had been found and was on his way home, but he was just very anxious. A sense of relief for a worried father, but no one knows the true extent of Gary Plouche's anger. The next day, in front of local news cameras, Jody Plouche is reunited with his family. <laughs> Did you learn anything from this? Just how much I love my children. Really, how much. It's just uh, it's a lonely feeling. It's, it's very emotional. You know. Days later, authorities are set to bring Jeff Doucette back to Louisiana. Retired Sheriff's Deputy Michael Barnett. I was one of the two people who went to California to uh, pick Jeff Doucette up and bring him back to Baton Rouge as a prisoner. As authorities move the accused through the airport, the team is on high alert. Abe McGull films the arrival for a local television station. I was up in the, just off the uh, security area uh, where the Plane where the passengers would leave the security area, and I noticed a, a gentleman standing by the bank of phones, which was about eight feet from me. That gentleman is the victim's father, Gary Plouche. I didn't pay too close attention to him because he seemed like just a, a normal passenger waiting for someone. I didn't know uh, that Gary was standing there. I didn't recognize him. I was looking behind the uh, TV lights to see if who else was there. I had my reporter uh, go close to the security side to let me know when the uh, suspect, Jeff Doucette, was being brought in. As he was coming, I zoomed in and zoomed out. We're all lined up, the person on the phone, uh, Jeff Doucette, and myself on the other side of him. Gary Plouche is now in arm's reach of his son's suspected abuser. With his camera, Abe McGull videotapes what happens next. A shocking close-range shooting after Gary Plouche takes aim. 
Once I was past the payphone, six feet or so, he turned and fired. I hear this pop. It's almost like a firecracker. I turned around. I recognized Gary at that point because he was facing me. Barnett's disbelief can be heard in the footage. Gary, why? Why, Gary? The film shows I said, why? He's got a house full of children, and now he's going to spend the rest of his life in a penitentiary. I mean, who's going to take care of your kid? Why did you do this? I've known Gary since junior high school. Laid back, last person in the world you'd think would be aggressive. Photographer Abe McGull, now an assistant U.S. attorney, witnesses the entire shooting through his camera lens. I follow Jeff Doucette, who is all of a sudden falling. Uh, his body is completely limp. And he, he turns his head, and I can see coming out of his right ear blood. And as I pan up on my camera, I can see Gary Ploche standing there. And almost immediately, the two officers who was escorting Jeff Doucette pounce upon him. I turned and, and got the gun away from Gary. Gary just gave up after he shot. We took the handcuffs off Jeffrey and put them on uh, him. Gary was almost catatonic, not aggressive not trying to get away, uh, just, I did it. So I've covered war zones, I've been to political conventions, interviewed presidents, and I'd never seen anything like that. Doucette dies from a single gunshot wound to the head. Gary Plauger is taken into custody. Uh, he has been actually arrested and booked with second degree murder. Jody Plauger finds out his father has killed Jeff Doucette and that it was all caught on camera. Well, they told me, they said, oh, they got video footage of it. Do not watch the news. I actually watched it. And seeing it, now I know what happened. After the shooting, the story dominates the local news, and a wave of support grows for Jody's father. The next day, the phone was just swamped with people calling, and I would guess 19 out of 20 were very upset about us even booking him for murder. The vast majority of people said, what would you do? He deserved what he got. That sort of thing. In the end, Gary Plauchet pleads no contest to manslaughter and is sentenced to five years probation and community service. As a prosecutor, you have to make decisions on every case. Here, the evidence was clearly a murder had taken place by Gary Plauchet against Jeff Doucette. But you have to take into consideration the impact uh, on the victim, Jody Ploche, who would have to relive some of the horrors that happened to him uh, as a witness in a case in which his father is being charged with murder. I understand exactly what my father did. He got lucky because he didn't go to jail, but I understand. Jody Plauche remains vocal about his abuse as a child and hopes speaking out will continue to raise awareness and provide hope to other victims of abuse. If you are a victim of, of this type of abuse or sexual abuse or even just physical abuse, um, with the proper support and counseling, uh, my family was my support, you can be okay. You don't have to be scarred for life.